Hello and welcome to this episode of the Print Mind Over Matter. We have all dealt with body image issues. In fact, uh, on a lot of occasions when I'm about to post my picture, I'm always looking at an angle that makes me look less fat sometimes or less rolls on my body and all of that. And I know for a fact that that that's not just me. All the pictures that you see, all the pictures of others that you see that you think are so perfect, it looks all natural, it's natural sunlight and it's natural. Nothing is really natural. A lot of these images are manufactured. The problem here is these images that we see and think of as real often create the kind of image that we should aspire to and that is where a lot of mental wellness issues also come in especially for women and especially for a certain age group uh, which is adolescent or teens but i'm not the expert uh, the expert here is um, tanushri sangma who's a art space therapist and she's going to tell us more about what exactly is body image and what are the issues and how does it impact our mental wellness welcome tanushri thank you for having me uh, tanushri let's start with the beginning so what exactly is body image so body image is essentially the way that we uh, look at ourselves the way that we feel about our own self right? right and you add the word uh, issues into it and it mm. becomes when we are not essentially happy with the way that uh, when i am not happy with the way that i look or right. i am not happy with the way i uh, essentially is perceived Right? Mm. And these are all influenced by and measured against essentially parameters that are created societally, like mm. externally as well. Mm. And you evaluate yourself against that. And when you're not happy with how you are supposed to look or should look or should be presented, that that's what we un, uh, is called body image issues. Okay. So we know that because of social media, mm -hmm. and in the last episode, we actually talked about, you know, social mm -hmm. media and detox and all mm -hmm. of it and taking mm -hmm. that forward actually today, mm -hmm. that a lot of these issues have become stronger for uh, youngsters, especially because mm -hmm. they are a generation that started with a smartphone, mm -hmm. you know, probably mm -hmm. they learned how to use a smartphone mm -hmm. before they learned their maths or ABCD. Mm -hmm. They see themselves only against, like you said, this other person of their age mm -hmm. who seems to look better somehow. Mm -hmm. And by better, of course, I mean they, they fit into Mm -hmm. an existing stereotype of how a girl or a boy mm -hmm. or whoever it is mm -hmm. should look like at a particular mm -hmm. age or uh, you know the height and all of it so can you like tell us in detail about the impact that that has on how we also view ourselves in stereotypes as opposed to mm -hmm. you know being able to accept ourselves yes. so stereotypes are essentially um, what is uh, inaccurately hmm. utilized to describe a particular group and right. what that really misses out on is the individuality aspect hmm. when we look at the core of dealing with body image issues it's so important to focus on the individuality of it hmm. these uh, stereotype images hmm. essentially they can be uh, learned understood through whether it's to advertisements whether it's through projection uh, on media hmm. right hmm. what you see your uh, favorite influencer your favorite uh, role model mm -hmm. what they are wearing what it is um, what they are also portraying right what it also does is that it creates a particular perception that this is what it is so body image issues is something that there was a time when we used to think that only teenagers have it because you know you're growing up mm -hmm. there's puberty there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to look a certain mm -hmm. way but now we know that you know women men whatever gender you identify with across the spectrum people have uh, body image issues. I was actually coming to something interesting. So in India, what we mm -hmm. like to promote ourselves is a very diverse nation with a diversity of body types, with a diversity mm -hmm. of the way we look. And yet, even then, uh, for example, for the longest time in Bollywood, there was no representation of anything from the Northeast. Like, you know, mm -hmm. when you're growing up, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. the, like, racism also enters because of that, mm -hmm. because everybody thinks mm -hmm. that if you look a certain way, then you're not mm -hmm. from this country altogether. Mm -hmm. So th I feel like there's an external pressure to that mm -hmm. body image mm -hmm. question. So I was wondering if you had any take on that, that how these regional differences also mm -hmm. get removed, interestingly, mm -hmm. in a country like ours, mm -hmm. where again, we come to a solid kind of where again, for example, look at our matrimonial ads. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be fair. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be slim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. At least for women. I mean, mm -hmm. that's like that has been that since ages. And how it's a big problem because mm -hmm. we don't look at the regional specificities, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Brown is beautiful is something that has come now, for mm -hmm. example. And that's like very recent very less I would say. So mm -hmm. I was wondering that kind of the impact that that can also have on you know body mm -hmm. image of mm -hmm. let's say a kid who's growing up and who doesn't look in that mm -hmm. stereotype and mm -hmm. the problems. Yeah. yeah. So again I, I think uh, going back to the point of um, uh, 
what is the stereotype? Right? Right, the right. stereotype is that when you uh, describe a particular group uh, or an individual on the basis of uh, inaccurate representation of the collective group. Right. right? And what that also essentially does is that it negates the very component of um, originality, it negates mm. the component of individuality, right? Even if right. I do belong to a particular region, mm. it doesn't, uh, the perception is that uh, you're supposed to look a particular way, right? right? Mm. That you're supposed to be, uh, the features are supposed to be this particular way. Right? Mm. What, it, what that also again removes is the whole aspect of individuality, right? right. And at the core of uh, you know tackling body image issues mm -hmm. or uh, tackling uh, issues around the dissatisfaction on the way that I uh, feel about myself also comes from understanding uh, the 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 understanding the component right that mm -hmm. the self right is a that that physical appearance is only one aspect right, of the self right. Mm -hmm. right and there's so many different variants to the self. Mm -hmm. It includes your strengths, it includes your abilities, it includes your interests, it includes your uniqueness. Right? Mm. And that's what we miss out essentially when uh, these conversations come up right? or right. this portrayal comes up rather. And the, the thing here is that because it's whether it's through exposure that's happening through discussions that you hear in your peer group mm -hmm. or through discussions that you hear uh, or to let's say some comments that may have been passed uh, you know loosely or mm -hmm. what you see in the media what that also does is that you're i think somewhere to critically evaluate that it's also a, a con constructed aspect right mm -hmm. and it's not really a depiction of reality on uh, the depiction of reality essentially right so this is i think a very important point uh, that uh, Tanushree has brought up that the problem with so much of focus on body image is important, yes, of course, to understand what struggle somebody might have with their bodies. But also the problem is we somehow uh, stop going beyond the way we look, you know, physically. I think we stop focusing on other things like we, we forget about our personalities altogether. So that's like really important mm -hmm. that has come up. Actually, now again, I'll bring in something which uh, India has a major problem. Hai. So let's say if you want to work out like mm -hmm. for your fitness, so if you walk into a gym and you're a woman, and I'm always speaking from experience, the trainer, the expert somehow automatically assumes that you must have come to lose weight mm -hmm. because you don't fall into a, you know, that body mm -hmm. image type of this is what, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a woman of this height and what, and mm -hmm. it's not dependent on science, by the way, mm -hmm. it's not dependent on even BMI, even BMI mm -hmm. now and I know mm -hmm. is not the most accurate way mm -hmm. of understanding I'm somebody's body type, right? Healthy. But yeah. Or health, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, you know, sometimes they automatically say, oh, let's just get you on to cardio. You should stop eating rice. You should stop eating carbs altogether. Mm -hmm. You do this diet, that diet. So I was coming to how body image issue and food consumption mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. become linked together and impact our mental mm -hmm. health, actually. Okay. Here, um, let's take it in two parts, right? right? One is in terms of let's look at from the person who mm. would have said that, you know, directly going to a cardio, mm. directly going to this exercise, stop eating this food, uh, yeah. stop eating that, do this more often, right? right. Or, uh, you know, losing weight aspect of it. We also need to understand that this narrative or that mm. perception or this idea, where is it coming from? It's mm. essentially coming from what we are being exposed to, right? What we right. believe are standards of um, how one should look like or how the idea that at this particular age group, um, this is what you're aspiring to, right? And all of these are also created and constructed, right? right. Now, that's where that uh, perception again, uh, you know, that that's also influencing the interaction that has happened. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, and the, the second part of this is that body image and uh, the, the pressure of trying to fit in, mm -hmm. right, in a certain way that one should look. Mm -hmm. right? It has a lot of consequences. One of the major consequences is definitely self-esteem. Right. Mm -hmm. Another consequences is navigating relationships. Mm -hmm. And that third is performance. Right. Mm -hmm. Whether you're if you're in school, it affects academics. If your your peer relationships, uh, if it, you are working, then it will affect your work uh, mm -hmm. life, the work quality as well. Now the other fourth aspect, right, is that how to deal with the image body image issues, maladaptive coping mechanisms also build up. Right? Right. And this is where um, the component of, let's say, there is a lot of link when it comes to dealing with body image issues, disordered eating also patterns also come up, right? Whether you're either uh, really restricting 
your diet mm. you're really restricting what you eat right mm. you're really either engaging in excessive amounts of uh, exercises and what's the intent behind that it's again essentially to achieve that particular um, standard of image mm. right? so yes it does definitely impact the uh, the the health aspect of it and i think again you know going back into what are we missing out when we are engaging in this behavior is that we're missing out the aspect that health has many different components to it right and what you eat or your diet is just one aspect of it it's one uh, it's just one component that can maybe perhaps impact the sense of self uh, mm. the self esteem the self image mm. yeah. so there is something that we often obviously now discuss about that there is fat shaming very obviously but then mm-hmm. there is also um this idea that because i'm bringing up the food aspect of it uh, mm-hmm. you know let's say if 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 i if i don't fit into a certain weight or i don't look a certain way and let's mm-hmm. say i'm eating so called fattening fattening foods mm-hmm. then there is an immediate was like are you really going to eat that mm-hmm. like so basically i wanted to like end today's mm-hmm. talk mm-hmm. about the language of shaming mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. when it comes to body image issues i wanted to talk about the language of shaming mm-hmm. how that plays the most most powerful role mm-hmm. i think like of course there is the image bit of it where we are mm-hmm. looking at a certain image mm-hmm. but w- because you mentioned that there are other aspects of it mm-hmm. one of the most common aspects that we face in india i think desi families that we all like to joke about but it's a twin double edged sword because it's also in families that you get a lot of this shaming mm-hmm. right like if you getting where oh you know we use these terms very loosely that mm-hmm. um obviously is embedded shame in mm-hmm. that term right mm-hmm. which then you start internalizing mm-hmm. i feel and i am speaking from experience by the way like this is something i have gone through mm-hmm. and i understand the impact it can have so i was wondering if you could tell us about mm-hmm. how language plays such a crucial role especially mm-hmm. in also creating body image yeah. yes. so language definitely does play a essential role mm-hmm. right especially when we want to look at uh especially when we try to understand that uh, for instance let's say a mocking comment on a post that you've done on social media or let's say a very um, something that comes up in a general conversation let's say you know do a little bit of uh, this to your face or do yeah, a little yeah. bit of that you know maybe do this a little bit more i think what that also does right, right. what that language also does is we the the kind of repercussion it has the kind of impact it has especially with younger people mm. right where the sense of self is still building right it's a formative year years of development where you're still understanding yourself where you're still you know developing your sense of identity right? mm. in those years it does have a lot more impact because the because at that age what's happening is especially in adolescence what's happening is that it's they tend to perceive it a lot more or give it a lot more importance than what it needs to right right so that's one component of where language can have an impact and sometimes these kind of narratives are so common right where we don't even recognize that this can have that much amount of impact on another individual even if it's if it's not adolescence you go a little bit into young adulthood it can still have that impact right mm. so when it comes to language there needs to be a lot more sensitivity in the way that we um you know have conversations around the uh, around the same aspect whether it's in a normal day to day interaction that's happening amongst the peer or um, b- between uh, family members as well so that component of language definitely does have a, a impact on uh, you know let's say on on body image issues and also to understand that the uh, within when we look at verbal bullying right what is verbal bullying essentially verbal bullying is when you are uh, it's bullying in the medium of when you say certain things or when you are mocking someone or you are um, uh, making fun of someone on the basis of the way that they look and you mm-hmm. are employing those language essentially in that and what that language does is that it does have so much impact on the self and like you said that it can essentially lead to a point where we do tend to internalize that Mm-hmm. Right? and give and which then impacts our sense of self worth which then impacts our sense of self confidence or self esteem as well mm-hmm. so there's something that i have learned that i wanted to share with you guys so the next time you feel this urge to comment on somebody's appearance the golden rule is do it only if you think it can be changed in a minute for example there's something stuck on their teeth that can be removed in a minute but if you're going to comment on the size of their teeth that can that be removed in one minute that can't right that's where you can start if you think you can't really immediately stop yourself from commenting on somebody's appearance 
the golden rule is you should never comment on somebody's appearance by the way but if you can't directly reach that goal maybe start here if you know that that's something that can't be changed immediately that something uh, cannot be done about it it's really not your place to talk about it right i think the person knows i think the person can decide for themselves if they want to change anyway we might not be able to change the narrative about body image issues entirely but we can do our bit to start that conversation and i think this is a good starting point um thank you tanushri for coming and talking to us uh, this is actually a two part uh, sort of element for mind over matter because in the next episode we are going to talk about how uh, we'll take this point actually forward where uh, eating eat disorders become a part of body image and self worth and how they may be linked or you know why do eating disorders actually take up uh, space in people's lives uh keep watching uh, mind over matter please also send in your feedback and suggestions and if anything that you'd like us to discuss with experts that would be really helpful for us in the meantime do subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us on our social media handles thank you mm -hmm.